I make this full screen. We're good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Meetings called to order. Uh, we have a quorum, so we're all set. Uh, no, any audience citizens on Zoom? Nope, just Steve. Hearing none. Okay, approval of minutes, November 11th. I cannot approve all the time. You are. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we got four, so we can do it. Yeah, um, you guys were here for the last yeah, one. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I, I have something to add on the on the. Okay, hold on, hold on. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make, make a motion, motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll second it. Dinesh seconds it. Okay. Any discussion? Go ahead. Um, I don't think the um, discussion part about the Sage Stoyfield bathroom. Um, it, it didn't grab the fact that I, I was um, disappointed with the, the, the whole way the entire school's bathroom project was handled. And um, I think a lot of us kind of felt that way. Um, so I'd like to see that added to the minutes. So, okay. So on page four. 5B. E. Yep. Yep. yep right there. I, I, I would agree to that. It, so you, so Tony, you, I'd like to and add, I think we, we need to reflect in these minutes, John, is that it? We'll make a motion to accept the minutes with Tony's proposed changes. And then Dana will mark it, mark that in the approval of minutes and the next minutes. Okay, but his point, so, but he can make the point that these minutes do not reflect he, he wants to alter the minutes and he makes, you guys made a motion to accept the minutes. You're going to make a motion to accept the minutes with Tony's additions. Right, right. Okay. All right. So we're going to, so we'll update it to reflect. Yeah, I'm sure when Dana watches the video, I'm sure she can take it. Your disappointment into something. In the project from start to finish. Right, start to finish, timing, et cetera. Lack of communication, lack of communication, conclusion, back then. They were finished and winterized. Okay, now just and let me just ask this, right? So just um well, okay, like I think most of the commissioners yes. felt that way, but yeah, I just I, want to make sure that that's I, so we'll say the commissioners, you know, want pressed. to make sure. Okay, all right, so that's good. Okay. The, the only other, well, let me add a change. So personal soccer field update, can we just put in on that one uh, and provide an update to uh, the town's youth soccer program? Just because I know you guys do it. When you're doing something with the field, you'll always go through with the main users of the field to show them. But yeah, we're just nowhere near that part because we haven't even gone out to bid yet for architect. We don't usually get involved with the field users until after we get an idea from the architect what we're going to do. Right. That's and then and then provide an update to you, soccer. That's all I'm asking to be added. So you and Steve will meet with the architect to review all planning document and options before you're going out to bid. But before you go out to bid, you're going to we don't talk to the soccer. field users until after we go out to bid with the architect. Once we hire an architect and come up with a rough idea of a plan, that's when we usually reach out to field users. Am I right, Stephen? Correct. Make sure I'm doing that right. Before you go out for construction, we would never go out to construction without consulting with field users. Yes. Right. Same thing we did with Scalise. If we're not Our... meeting with an architect that we know that is going to give us some insight onto how to go out to bid for architect. We haven't gone out to bid for architect. So that conversation wouldn't happen until later. Jen, can they hear me? Yeah. yeah. So prior to Scalise, we got design services, which was Castle Booths. And then at that time, they have a whole entire form that we send out to all the field users of what they wanted to see for markings, what they wanted to see, they wanted so, to see ads. Like and then we took their advice and put it into the bid document prior to deciding to go with field turf. Okay. So I'd like to reflect that in item day, just to make sure that the users are being conferred with, okay? Mm -hmm. Any other comments, changes? When are we going to deal with the, uh, the uh, is that 
That's tonight. Well, no, no. So, so basically, but that's part of the old units that we're approving. No, it's not. It's not? No. no. All right. Well, it's no, we were just. Oh, you just put it in. We asked her to go. It's okay. part of the minutes from last meeting, but the right. last is in there. I got it. I got it. Good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor of approving the minutes with those two changes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Hearing none, make those changes. Okay. Uh, consent agenda. Your point, Greg. Uh, approve the updated policy of memorials and naming facilities slash fields. So as Jen pointed out in the email, it's what page eight, mm -hmm. yep. eight and nine. Yep. So thank you, Jen, for passing that on to the attorney. So everything in red is what the attorney has now suggested. No, mm -hmm. everything in the light red is Tony. Red. Everything in the darker red. The like, for example, the red that says recommended for approval in that first paragraph, that is the attorney. He did so dark, the, he did a the darker red, red on this. So darker underlined. red is attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yes, good point. I didn't even notice that. Because you had already Anything approved that's all the time. Right. Okay. Okay. Don't know if anybody, if everybody's had a chance to review. I did. Um, any comments? So even though we approved it, I was just reading through, and I and I guess it's a item five on the last page. It says the Park and Rec Commission will make a recommendation to the Town Council. Um, I am, I know it's understood that we'll only recommend those to be approved. However, do you think some intent of that could say you'll let the people know either way? You'll let the council know either way if it's a, a mood. We have these. We have these uh, fields or uh, properties that want to be memorialized with a person's name, and but we're not going to approve it. So I'm just wondering if we should just because me reading it and I looked at it again, I'm going. Uh, I think that's answered in number six. Yeah. yeah. A written response right. will be sent by me after the commission's right. decision. So whether or not you approve it, whatever you decide, I'm going to follow up with a letter. Yeah. Well, I understand, but then it should just let Good. So the recommendation is no or yes. Because yeah, because my on. letter. So hold on. I see Greg's point. My letter is going to be sent before the right. accounts. Right. But, 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 but there's no question about that. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> but if we send it to the commission, could they change to the council? Council, uh, can, can, always, the council. council can always override your decision. Right. So I thought the reason why when we originally talked about that was because. You want to make sure that the council time to review and make a recommendation or deny or whatever the case you need before we went back to the to the group. But I think if you guys approve it and it's yeah. going to go to council, they should be given the opportunity to get people there for audience of citizens at council to support it. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree with that. That makes sense. It's like the next level. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They have sorry threshold yeah. and then we're at the next level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With me. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to split five and six. Okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Hearing none, did I have a motion to uh, accept the consent <coughs> agenda item? Well, the only consent agenda item tonight. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda item. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Should I be abstaining? I... No. No, you have no right. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Anyone opposed? No. Now, Mr. Tony? Now that it's approved, we had always told the Martirano family that we would get back to them when this was revised. So, with your permission, I will email the Martirano family that came and presented for their dad and say that this is the new policy and if they'd like to try it, if they feel they still fit in that category, we'd like to try again. And again, they need to provide yeah, a written mm -hmm. recommendation answering these where, you know, how it falls into the policy. So yep. let me give you, because you don't have this on um, Word, let me take it out of red, take out all the cross outs. Okay. Right? And you want this clearly just same color. It includes attorneys. Yeah. But all the changes. You're going to accept all the changes. Yeah. 
you should be able to, because I sent you the Word document from the attorney. So you should just be able to accept the changes. Okay. As a separate document. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Okay. That's why the two of us will do. All right. Yeah. 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 Right, so Whoever has the master, master just accept it. Okay. Just, I think you have to be careful on how we word the email that you know, mm -hmm. how we I don't want it to sound like a new policy. Can you go back and explain the fact that we have a revised policy? Right. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Right. And we told and we told them that that is a conversation right. I had with them the next right. day. So. I just don't want people thinking, well, because they came in and talked to you, we're not covered. Right. Policy. And in his situation, even if you guys approved it, he'd still have to go to board that anyway. Okay. And they don't have a policy. Correct. Or no. Not yet. No. Or maybe. So that's dead in the water right there. Right. So again, thank you very much, Tony, for yes. starting the conversation and drafting. I think it's a good doctor. Okay, partial rec. Monthly report. Uh, the only thing I just wanted to add that I had forgot to put on there was we are also doing the house decoration contest this year. Um, so I think we have 15 or 16, which is a lot less than we had last year, but we still have some entries and we'll take them um, up until I think we're going to revise it. It was going to be until tomorrow, but we'll let people register over the weekend if they want to. Okay. And then uh, a few of my staff were going to drive around and judge like we did last year. So that was one thing I forgot to put on. You see some uh, on Facebook. I don't know if Berlin or Buzz or Berlin talks about women and her daughter driving around town yeah. and commenting on lights and neighborhoods mm -hmm. and how beautiful everything looks and kind of drawing a map of where she's gone. Yeah, um, pretty neat. Yeah, good. I mean, people get into it. I think it's, I don't, I'm, I'm sure last year because everyone was more homebound, that's probably why we got <coughs> more entries and now people have more stuff going on. Um, but We'll, whatever we get, we'll do and we'll judge. And we'll give, last year we did uh, gift certificates to different pizza places in town. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have. If anyone has any questions? Or... Um, are we still unmasked here in the Union Center? Yeah, the policy it's whatever unmasked, but back, uh, unvaccinated that's are right. to wear a mask. So. That hasn't changed. That has not changed. Or could Berlin increase? Right? We have we get our directive from the town manager's office, and they have not changed. It is it, we're back in the red. Right. Uh, Berlin has a lot of like, sixty-one. Forget where I read a lot of cases. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I I personally wear my mask all the time. So, but it's we're we're told to um, follow what the comes out of the town manager's office. So at this point, it's unvaccinated. Have to wear masks. Vaccinated. And have an option. Okay. If it changes, I'll let groups know. As of right now, nothing has changed. And we tend just change their policy now. Yeah. They're closed down. Everybody yeah, Newington from day one has had a has had a program in place yeah. that if they hit yellow, no matter what the hit numbers are, if they hit orange, no matter the numbers, if they hit red, no matter the numbers, they follow these, you know, the close down, only meet, you know, virtually and everything like that. And they've been sticking to that. So I know Wethersfield is still open like we are, so yeah. and Rocky Hill is still open like we are. I did know their community center, from what I read anyway, that they're still running programs, but everybody has to be messed up. And, but they're still allowing the programs to continue, but everybody else is still in, in, in Newington. Was that Newington? Because I know a lot of the programs they were not letting them run at the community center. They had to run them at This schools. was based on an article I just read today. Yeah. It could be more detailed. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I know that they were uh, getting advice from the health district to run more programs at the schools and in their brand new facilities. So um, that may have changed. I haven't, I haven't spoken to the director recently. Okay, one thing I do want to mention is Santa Village. It was down here in the corner room. It was awesome. I had the opportunity of stopping in here for something. I forget why I was here, but I saw Debbie and she said, you have a minute. And I did I send out the pictures yeah, to you guys? Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Because it was to see the pictures didn't do it justice. No. To see what you guys transformed into that that's not you guys, that's all Debbie. Pretty special. Yeah. So it was it was really awesome. You see all the blow up uh, yeah. 
Yeah, the kids they love those things and everything. Yeah. So, and what which which did you find the comment on? Was it buzz or talks? Uh, on Berlin Buzz. What you found? Oh yeah, there, there was a nice yeah nice comment, nice, so. comment. nice to get positive uh, comments from people. So. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of new families, which is nice because obviously we haven't done it. So, um, and we we geared to the younger ages. So we're a lot of people that have never come into our building and have done our program. So hopefully we'll carry on and have them come back for the next few years and expand even more. But 70 was was really good for us for the local two nights. We haven't had numbers like that in a long time. So it was nice. And on the winter programs, you know, uh, so you're putting it on the town website, yeah. the town's Facebook page, Board of Education. Yeah. Um, when our kids were younger, they used to hand things out like in the schools. Do they, they know the board of ed policy is no longer yeah, hand out flyers? Yeah, it's all on the community page. Yep. So people have to be able to get onto a website of some type, you know, or Facebook. Meriden's the same way. I mean, they come in our office. We always have flyers in our office. I put flyers at town hall, but the how about how about the citizens? Like, can we put something in the citizen just they, to let people know? They're really they're, they they do not do a good job covering our stuff. Have we tried to put something? I mean, you oh, for years. years. Yeah. yeah, but uh, they, we, we, only if there's <coughs> minimal space, we'll get anything in there. It's been very frustrating. So I even talked to Christy, who was having the same frustrations with the citizen. So it's, it's an ongoing issue. So, um, I mean, so we've tried recently. Is it, they were, no they were here there? after the Santa thing. Yeah, she the woman interviewed me for 10, 15 minutes about the Sands parlor, took pictures, and there was I thought we would have something in this recent the one that came out today. There was no mention of the event at all. Um, they they just it's, it's very it's, it's whatever space they have, they'll put something in, but no, we haven't done it. And and don't forget, we we've, we've been in COVID for over a year and a half, so I have not tried recently, but in the before that we had not had any of that at all. And I can add many things to that and wouldn't get anything in. It was frustrating. Can, can that, could you, and I'm just trying to get the word out for the winter programs. Can, can, can you put it on Berlin Buzz and Berlin Talks? It, it goes, everything we have on Facebook. Everything we put on the Facebook is yeah. then shared to Berlin Buzz and Berlin Talks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. and then I've yeah. seen it on uh, Facebook. Yeah. 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 The Berlin feed is another one that I've seen other people share it too. Okay. Um, I, I've put a lot of pictures of boosters up in the citizen, but um, in that column that says in brief, um, you can send an email to news at Berlin Citizen, and then just give them a little, not even a, not even a whole paragraph. Yeah. And you see, you always put it in, but you got to do it weekly. Well, I, I, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, because they'll put it in one time, then they'll take it out, you know, send it in again. Right. So, like, you do the car wash. I would do that three weeks in a row. They always, they always took it. Yeah, we, I don't know we, why, but they did. For some, I mean, the library puts it, gets information, the senior center, but we would submit stuff all the time. And very I'm rarely, gonna call them tomorrow. Very rarely get stuff in. I'll tell you why. Well, and also part of this you'll hear we talk about it later, but you know, let's have a car correct corner, give an update on the programs or whatever, just a little corner, and and. We can also talk about community and senior center meetings. You want to pay for it? But you know that update yes. section no. where you might see your news or you know things going on. I mean, why not? That's crazy that they're I mean, and I'll be honest, I run the town Facebook page with one other person. Debbie probably uses the town Facebook page more than any other department. That's I mean, what we need if you scroll down the town page. Facebook page, yeah. It's it's probably 75 80 percent parks and rec. Yeah, so it's good. It yeah, is there. I think we got it wrong. Did we make that? Yeah, we're sad, but right on it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Any questions, for Debbie? No. Thank you. Okay. Because I'm always going back and forth here, so. Uh, is it community center? Yeah. Okay, so uh, since our last meeting, we've been to Brantford. I don't think uh, so. We've been to Brantford. Debbie was there, Tina, um, Brendan, and myself. 
and uh, they did a refurbished uh, community and senior center. And you can tell, for as nice as Brantford is, I wasn't overly impressed personally, uh, but we did make a list of things that we liked and things that you know we did we didn't like. Uh, presented that at our last meeting. Um, the downstairs is park and rec. There is a gym. There is no pool. They have other pools in town. Uh, they do have a Y in town, and they of course have the beach. Um, they have a very big staff for parks and rec and for the seniors, and a very small staff for maintenance, which is crazy. Four people, this is what he said, four people do the maintenance of their community and senior center. Now again, COVID's hit, so there isn't a lot going on either. <coughs> four people, and they take care of the fields, maintenance, other things in town, and the beaches. Four. I, you know, that's what he said, but, but their staff itself is pretty big, bigger than our staff, and not as many programs, it didn't seem, uh, when we were there, we were there during the day, senior center, really, there was nothing going on, they had three programs, one was at eight o'clock in the morning, and then there were two at one o'clock in the afternoon, everybody split, like no one hangs out, at our senior center, people hang out, and there's a lot, a lot going on, a lot of different programs at the same time, um, but again, COVID, so it's hard to judge. Um, park and rec area, a it, it, little tight, um, smaller rooms, and like I said, it's downstairs. Gym was nice. Um, some improvements with, we would have done with that, but Debbie, I don't know if you have any thoughts that you bring out. I didn't bring my notes, but. No, I mean, the, the gym was nice. Uh, they do support it to uh, have multiple games going on, which is nice. Um, one of the features that I liked upstairs in the senior center was for their dividers, they actually folded up into the ceiling. Yeah. So it saves a lot of space, looks a lot cleaner. Uh, the door frames where you go through kind of fold into the side uh, side wall, which was a nice, you know, nice little feature, made it look a lot nicer. Um, they had a lot of updated things with technology and especially for the seniors. Um, I think they talked about if someone that was hearing a care, they could get things like Bluetooth on their phone if they had a, like a ear plug in, which you know is something to think about, especially in that group. But they're they're multi or their large room upstairs could be divided into three areas, which were pretty good size. One was off the kitchen where they would normally have meals or if they were in full operation. Yeah. But, but the, the walls were soundproof, so you could have activities going on in those other two areas without hearing anything, which, which is nice. Really good. That was nice. They had a separate room um, just for uh, like exercise and dance class type of things that had special flooring. So that was nice. They had glass, uh, I mean, mirrors on the walls. But also a lot of their rooms, which I liked, had windows to look outside. Mm -hmm. So you didn't feel like, you know, in a room where you can't see anything. Almost all of them. You know, you had an outside view, which to me makes a room more inviting for people. So the, the senior center, the top where Debbie's talking about, very nicely. <coughs> it's it's a notch above the, the recreation down below, and it's a nautical thing. And they actually have a lounge area called Waverly Lounge, like a bar, um, and they do serve beer and wine. and they provide transportation. <laughs> 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 yeah. They do have, yeah. yeah. But again, COVID, you know, they're limited to what they could do now, but it was a nice bar with a TV around. And, you know, people will go in there and have their coffee, read the paper or whatever, but it was all upstairs in the senior center. Quite a distinct separation of the two departments. And part of that is the two leaders of the departments don't mesh very well, but the director of Parks and Rec was telling us that when they both retire, which you know maybe in a couple of years, the plan is to make them all one department. So, uh, but yeah, so it was it was pretty interesting. I went, I I guess mistakenly came in the senior center door. I was upstairs, and then they said, "Oh, <coughs> you belong downstairs." And tell what's his name? Tell, yeah, tell, yeah, tell, tell him we said hi. And I thought that was weird. So I come down, but I said, hey, so-and-so says hi upstairs. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, weird. Then he got into all this stuff. So he's 
just complete separation. One of the other things, which I'm sure wasn't really planned, but they had they had seating and then windows that looked down on the gym. So like he said, his parents would go and watch the grandkids play basketball, but they weren't in the gym where it's loud and everything else. They were sitting comfortable seating. So that was kind of a nice, yeah. you know, nice little feature. And it's kind of like a being you know, on a cruise. I mean, it was really pretty yeah. cool. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, so <laughs> tonight we went to window. Uh, Tina was there, Mike Aranga, and myself. And um, they're in construction, and it seems like it's gonna be, they're supposed to move in December 22nd. But I don't see that happening, but their general contractor will start to lose some money after that date if they don't move in. And the plan from an operational standpoint is have the departments move in. And then have one month of them getting squared away and then allow the public to come in. They've actually invited us for the open house, which they hope to have in February. Yeah. Um, theirs is 33,000 square feet. And again, our plan is 70,000 that we have right now. So actually, it was, it was really good to see. They do have a pool, one pool. Um, it was good to see what 33,000 square feet is. And it's probably my opinion, too small. Um, that being said, maybe, you know, maybe 50, 55,000, I could kind of see that. I said, okay, now I can, I can visualize it a little bit more. You go into the pool area from the locker rooms and very, very narrow decking. And the pool is right there. Like if you have a kid, you gotta hold that kid's hand and walk down because that kid will just go right in the pool. Like the pool is four to five feet. In depth, there's no competitive pool, it's a four lane pool, mainly used for you know water aerobics, family swim, and things like that. They do not have a competitive pool in town. They are building a new high school, and that had the competitive pool put in, but they pulled it out to the fund. Um, this facility that they built, uh, they started like four years ago trying to get the wheels going, and like us, it was many years before that, but seriously, about four years ago. And, um, the referendum was a couple of years ago. Uh, they approved 18 and a half million, probably come out of 20 million. Um, and they got the person we met with, I'm not, he, he's not really knowledgeable about dollars, but he said we got four to six million from the state. And then the taxpayers paid the balance. So that's a fair amount from the state. Um, uh, so, uh, I think this is a good one to kind of follow. Lessons learned, they use the same architect that we have. Uh, they have lower ceilings, higher ceilings in the rec opening area, in the senior opening area, nicely done on the, on the ceilings as far as keeping it open for providing some kind of decoration down below. So again, easy access to get up if there's an issue. They have a huge gym. And then there's two stairways going upstairs into the other side a huge other gym, which is really going to be a wrestling room. Because their wrestling program, like ours in Berlin, the youth wrestling is a big program. And <clears throat> I said, how did you sell this to the public? He said, it was pretty easy. Wrestling took it over, and the seniors took it over. And they kept on going and going and pushing and pushing. And those groups got it done. That's what he said. So we got the pool. That's seniors. Yeah. That's, you know. We need more people involved in ours. We need groups. So, um, so it's good. Again, good to see. We've got some, you know, positive things. Some things that we might do a little differently based on what we've seen. Um, they had dividers, but they went off to the sides of the wall, into the wall, automatic, not up in the ceiling. The ceiling actually looks better, right? Um, so they, they had some nice things. So generally good. We'll probably, we provided a list of things that people liked and didn't like uh, at the next meeting, which is January 6th, I think, is the date um, for our next community center, senior center advisory meeting. Um, we did have at our last meeting our state reps, all three came Donna Beach, Kathy Abercrombie, and Rick Lopes, and uh, Jim Mahoney joined us. And it was Really good discussion. Uh, they provided a lot of input. Kathy, our economy, <coughs> for a long time. 
she knew how things work and what you have to do. Um, and what she pointed out is you need one of the reps to actually name the project and own it because now with Lamont, he's limiting them. And so if you want you know, to support funding, you gotta pick that project and you only get one project to the once a year for your term, your two year term. So that might be something John Beach might want to grab hold of, as we told her. And you know, uh, Rick Lopes said he's putting on his priority list for the Senate. They talked about other funding, um, talked about the buy as an option, um, which we haven't looked at as a group yet, but we are starting to go there in January. We're going to go to Putnam Y, which is the newest Y in the state, 2016, it was built, and Meriden Y. Um, and the executive director, John Medigny of the Meriden, Berlin, New Britain Y is coming to our advisory group for our February meeting. That is a meeting that I would suggest everybody attend. There are there's some big questions because that's a big change if we decide to go down the Y path. So I really ask you to, you know, if you don't, if you can't come, give me questions. I'll make sure we get answers to it. So, He's just going to come and say how he would do it, what he would do, how it would work with senior community center, blah, blah, blah. So it'll be an interesting couple of months. Um, uh, do you think, you think you're making progress to be ready for it to go to referendum in April? No. Uh, April's up. Um, it's already been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did ask our uh, advisory group to commit to November referendum and work towards that. And so I suggested that our January meeting be a work session. So we accumulate everything that we have so far. What else do we need to do and want to do? And what is the drop dead date for November referendum? So that we work towards that. Maybe hopefully meet a little more frequently. Um, so that's what we're going to do for our January meeting. Real work session, you know, make cumulative lists. This is what we, based on our visits, because we really visited quite a few places. These are things that we think we need, want, don't want, based on the plans that we, conceptual design that we have. We will be bringing the architect and building commission in at some point, uh, you know, maybe at the March meeting, I, I, I don't know, but we need to work towards that to find out, okay, Tom, if we do this, we do this, we need you to kind of come up with another conceptual estimate of cost or whatever. So, but it's, it's unfortunate, you know. So you have a, like business, so you have a deadline. Well, that's what I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm thinking about uh, that way is uh, without a dollar amount and how that affects taxes. Yeah. Because uh, you're, not, you're nowhere. Right, you need, that, a, you need a, a firm dollar amount where the money's going to come from. Uh, it's the problem with funding is that um, the town <coughs> has to the whole project, and most of the funding, as our state reps explained, right, comes after that. They want to see that there's buy-in, and then the state will consider bonding. You know, there's a bonding option. There's getting grants options. They have an economic challenge option. Um, of which the town of Berlin is now going to put in some monies for Kensington Village area, uh, which is good use. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you're going to get that after. You're not going to, we're not going to so, be able so to firmly you, say. Yeah, you have to, you're going to have to come out with the worst case scenario. Right. So you'll get nothing, nowhere. That, right. And then just say, though, by the way, we have our state reps right here. And, but tell them what you, you said you're going to do it for us, you know. Uh, you know, yeah, that's what this, we have to do. For the state I owe you. For the state, I owe you. The way the bonding process works is like, let's say Donna wanted to make this her project and she wanted to put in for it. She can't even put in for it until it is shovel ready. For bonding. For bonding. So it's not going to be shovel ready right. until we get referendum and get construction. Right, plans. because you have to have construction plans. <laughs> In place, yeah. So we we're not there yet, right? We, the plans right. are going to come after once you start bidding. From the from the town people, right? The average guy, yeah. they, don't, they don't care. Right, they don't care. They just you know they're they're going to. They see the price tag for the five mil. That's what they do. 
And they don't understand that we the back <coughs> the cost to go down to be all serious fine. Yeah. So oh that's I mean that's in every town or that we visited has <coughs> done the same thing. And they've been able to sell it to the town. Um because but, they have the community behind them. There's the opportunity to for um, like Kathy Abercrombie had mentioned, reaching out to Eversource and Comcast, and we're going to discuss that as a committee and possibly say, you know, are, are you looking to get on board? Like, you know, the Eversource Aquatic, you know, Center or whatever, something like that. And that's something you might, once you get further in the process, you might be able to get companies like that to commit. And Kathy was willing to help us with that. So, but can't Donna, as a state rep, be more? Communication, but like Joe used to put stuff on Facebook all the time. You, you look at what Pettit does for Cleveland. He's on social media all the time talking about the things that he's doing for the town. Donna doesn't do anything. I don't even think I've seen anything. Well, now she, on she, they do. They do. Right. Card again, yeah, she does. They, they, they post. I always see it. Email, but on, but on if you media. friend her, you might oh, see it. I, I, I see it all the time. But she's not talking about this. She did come, and I think you'll be hearing more from her. Quite frankly, you can watch YouTube. And I, at the end of it, I said, thanks very much. I think all of you need to work together as a team, and I'm looking for 10% of this project from the state. You know, I mean, that's, you got to push. Well, you do. And, you, and, you know, I Donna so came good. in after the meetings. She said, I am going to get in touch with someone's oh, election. Good. Those are bonding. I'm going to do this. So she's, I think, I think she might have even learned from Kathy, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Kathy seemed to know mm -hmm. where to go mm -hmm. and, and all that. But, you know, Donna's new. So, okay, that's great. Good. Let's know what you come up with. And Donna asked me for our meeting date, so I think she'll be out of the meeting. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, that's where, until people understand how to practice <laughs> the politics work, no one's going to. I'm going to really worry about that. Is it just about the time? No, I'll have the high school swim team has to practice that plan. Right. Yeah. Use it up. Yeah. Anyways, to their home, home school, diving board profile. They don't have diving board. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it just throws the emergency yeah. of the, the whole project. Right. How bad it's mm -hmm. So, um, I would ask all of you to look in the citizens tonight. I have a picture of it here. Uh, impress it. He's only been on the town council for about a month, but I'm already impressed with town councilor Jack Pizzino, who has come to every one of our advisory committees. And if you look, he reports on everything that we discussed at every one of the meetings on his Facebook page. He real, I, I hats off to him because he's finally someone's communicating with the public, trying to. So this person, who I, I don't know, um, he communicates constantly with residents via Facebook and Twitter about council proceedings and progress on boards and commissions. Transparency like that is rare and greatly appreciated. Recently, Pizzino gave an up extensive update on the town infrastructure projects as well as the community senior center that I've not read even from members of the committee in charge of the project. True, we haven't done any public outreach since I've been on that committee and I've been asking for it. That's what we need to do. We need the community involved. So, Council Fazino is leading, blah, blah, blah. I don't know this woman. It was a great, I think it's right Is that a letter to the editor? Yeah. Yeah. So, That's I'm it. hopeful, and I ask every commissioner here tell 10 people, go to our meetings. We're, we're getting a couple people at the meetings. People spoke at the last one, um, you know, in favor of the project, in favor or not. <coughs> Listen to this stuff. Ask the questions, you know, start talking about it. So I'm really, I really need, I really need help. I don't need help. We all need help to get the word out there and get people to our meetings to show, you know, there's interest. Agree or not, there's interest, you know, so. What time on January 6th? Six. We meet a girl that says, January 6th, let me go check. And, you know, bring other people. You know, you guys, you're updated, you know, but other people aren't. And that's exactly right. And, and you know, I think I think uh, our commission, our advisory commission, has to do more of that. So, okay. Any other questions? So, um, so from a timing perspective, so let's say it goes to referendum and it passes. What's the next step after that? 
then yeah. you get working on the, uh, you know, well, it's a for, for a general sure. contractor, yeah. get construction, but, but the architect actually has to do detailed plans, construction plans, you know, look at the numbers, might have to tweak it again, you know, numbers go up or whatever. Um, but there's a whole process. So yeah. once so, a referendum, based on Tom R. Carey's estimate, it's 18 to 24 months before you move in. And then the other thing I'm thinking about is the cost escalation. The oh, yeah. The we go. Mm -hmm. That's right. The, the cost escalation, because we're not going to hit the April referendum, assumed construction started towards the end of the summer. Right. Um, so the 37 and a half million might be north uh, if we go to November, because you're certainly not going to start in the winter. It's going to start sometime or the following April, probably. You know, if it passes. So, um, yeah. If, you know, we'll have to see. And we all know there's compromise. You know, everybody come together. We can figure this out. So, so do, we, do, you, do we have a calendar of events going to the meeting? I know you said the 6th and 6th. It's, it's the first Thursday of every month. Yeah, up until May-ish. We can do the whole 2022 year. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Let's do those soon. We're, I forget yeah. how far we went out. <laughs> that's the minimum. Yeah. You know, at mm -hmm. least that's all we've got them to agree with. Okay, anything else on that? Great. Um, okay, Steve. First Brown. Wake Steve. Steven. You're on. Oh, Sorry. It's been, it's been a long day, unfortunately, with the snow. Um, so you guys pretty much have seen the attached there report. There it is. I see it move. It move. Was it delayed? Sorry, it's 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 been a long day so far with the snow this morning. Um so pretty much the biggest thing of the month is if you drive around and look at all the Christmas lights that the guys have put up all throughout town, I think they've really done a great job. Um, town Hall looks beautiful. The Senior Center, the Dog Pound, Makachi Park, Volunteer. I mean, they really went out of their way. All of Main Street, except for the Christmas tree that the fire departments decorate. I mean, I really think everything looks great. And it's going to be all for you to grow. What did he say? <laughs> I'm deaf. Um, so that pretty much concludes the parks and grounds report. The other things we want to talk about is uh, Tony had brought up the last couple of meetings regarding signs at parks to kind of identify who to contact. And I met with Rocky Hill, Newington, Plainville, Weathersfield, and Cromwell to see what they do at all of their parks. And all of them unanimously discouraged it for the fact is currently we have several platforms out there for ways for people to contact us through social media, the town, face, the town website, the town Facebook page, individual departments, and our, our, and our phone numbers that are direct, on our directory. And the reason was is you're just inviting yourself to be inundated with everybody who has a problem. Where the system that is set up now is you file a complaint, it goes to the current department and then they address it that way. Um, we can discuss that, thoughts on that. Um, well, I mean, you know, I appreciate you going to all the different towns and asking what they do. Um, I, I find it a little strange that why, why wouldn't you want to encourage a phone call from a, you know, park user? If they got a problem in a park. Instead, I guess the point, the only point is that I was trying to make is that day is that that resident who used um, that, that facility, she instead of calling anybody at the town or making a complaint through the proper channels, she went and posted it on Facebook. Right. You know what it, I mean? Right. Which is the platform that identified of what was going on there. Don was nice enough to reach out to me that night and say, hey, by the way, this is there. So there is the platform for them to get in contact without us putting a billboard of signs. If you have a complaint, please contact the Park and Rec Department at 860. So, I mean, definitely up for discussion on it. It's just that's their opinion, and they've been in this business a lot longer than I have. And just because you put a sign up, it's not going to stop you from posting on social media. 
We all know that. Of course not, but you know, not everybody knows <laughs> where and uh, what place the director comment. I mean, they could call anyone in town hall. We constantly get calls for public works. We transfer it up. We get calls for the senior center. All the departments are used to getting calls from other people that don't know which department to call. And we all work together as a town and get them to the proper person. If you go on the town web page and you file a complaint that goes directly to the town manager's assistant, uh, administrative assistant, at that time, she facilitates it to a department. If she's not in, I believe Lisa Panessa facilitates it to the department it has to go to. So we have, like I said, several platforms already in place for this. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to discuss is I checked with Len Zielinski and we currently do not have a policy in place regarding tennis courts and basketball courts lights. We have a town order and say the lights go off at 10 o'clock. But going back through the last several years, we don't know when the lights are turned on for the year. We don't know when the lights are turned off for the year. And Jen and I sat down and kind of butted heads and went back and forth on what we thought would be the best is we'd like to mirror the field closure policy opening and closing of when we turn the lights on and when we turn the lights off with taking down the tennis nets, the windscreens, I'm sorry, the taking down the tennis nets and the canopies and everything at all the other tennis courts. Our thought process is that is once the weather dictates that it's going to snow like it did today, we would take them down prior to that event and keep them down until we know the snow had melted for the year next March or next April in the beginning of it and set it up right before the high school season. But the lights seemed to be the predicament. So it became like November 2nd, a resident from Brandy Lane had called and filed the complaint that the lights were still on and they're supposed to be off. And then the phone calls kept coming back and forth of, well, why are they on? Why are they not off? So I don't know what your guys' standpoints are on the lights of when you'd like to see them on or when you'd like to see them off. And I purposely think that's foolish for us to shut them off in October or the first week of November if the weather's 65 degrees and people can go out and play, especially with us turning the clocks for daylight savings. Um, and so when they're on, they stay on until 10 o'clock at night, every night? Yep. Yep. And now, you know, the complaints are it's winter and there's no leaves on the tree. So now all of a sudden the lights are shining into our yard. So typically we close all fields except for high school and special requests um, the first Monday in November. I was gonna, that's what I was going to say. So shouldn't we follow a field closure? But then to Steve's point, if you have a warm November, people want to go out and right. play, then you cut them out. They got to play and outside. Next week is going to be in the 50s. Right. And, yeah. so, and they can still play looking, during the day. I mean, the courts are still open. Right. It's, it's, nice it's just once it's it gets nice. dark, there's no light. Yeah, but it's so cool. <laughs> well, what, I mean, I mean, should we, should we look at like a December 1st date? I mean, I, I'm just throwing out an idea just because of the fact that typically December is winter starts in some respects. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. In all these years in the past, there was never no date. No, it was always, we looked back, Steve looked back in all the documents, it was always kind of weather-based when the first snowstorm hit, um, or when it started getting, you know, frigid cold for a few so, days on end. We've so never had guys, anything. They're off, now. they're off now, yeah, after all the complaints. But you started getting complaints when? November 2nd. November 2nd? Yep, whatever really? that Monday was. Oh. That was the first complaint. Because of the leaves. Because there's no leaves on the tree, so now it shines into the no. air. Anybody know if anybody uses those courts at night still in November? I don't know. Yeah, once I mean, football was over, it stopped seeing, but yeah. they, they did them up through, I think I saw people start playing tennis up through November 18th or the right. It was a warm November Right. Basketball. But during the day, though. I mean, at night you saw them? Well, we were doing our practice like at 14 when we were coming yeah. at 4.35 o'clock. Yeah, right. Play. And you got that, you know, yeah. the time change, so right. it gets darker early. So. We, since turning off the lights the first week of November, we have not had one complaint that the lights were off. So, so say if you uh, stick with that policy, closing the 
or it's turning the lights off, coinciding with the field closing. I mean, we won't know until next year. Right. But you can let the people know yeah, in advance and say, hey, right. Well, what's the sign? I got a feeling that joke was about a sign. <laughs> Any questions for Tony? <laughs> Yeah, no. So, you know, propose them along with the rest of the, it would seem to be consistent. Right right. Yeah. We don't want you using a grass field past that date. So, why should you use a basketball court at night? Yeah. Right. Like the tennis courts, the tennis courts were going to officially close tomorrow. We, the snow that came in today, we just, we're going to go in, take everything down before we get another snowstorm, take the canopies down before they get damaged. And then we'll reopen everything back up probably. Some around March 22nd to April 1st next year, once the snow melts off the high school uh, basketball and tennis courts. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, what are you looking for from us? Uh, you looking for a so we're looking for what do we want to do, and I will put it in a motion in the January meeting to amend the field facility use policy with the one sentence about when to turn off lights. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. The first then, Monday know, of November is when we close the grass fields. So. Yeah, we said, don't play in the grass. We, we were open until November. Right? The next With other, other than department permission. Okay. You guys had a lot of rain outs that we let but, you play in. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. And when do you take down the portable lights? The portable lights come down 56 days after the day they're delivered. <laughs> it's like the first. Not the a day first. later. It's like the first week in it November. Was a, it it's Royal Youth Football had their last well, two weeks of practice. At well, see, yeah, I'm just going to ask say that because that, <laughs> that just coincides the same time, right? The affordable lights, the field usage, regular lights, everything November first, right? It was a Friday, right? The Friday. portable lights are different because the portable lights are based are built in a 28 day cycle. So we oh, rent yeah. the lights for 56 days. So wherever the 56 days lands, that's where we terminate the contract with the United Rentals. Okay, but again, no, if, if, if November 1st is your field policy, unless there's an exception, you're closing that field down November 1st as well. We pretty much know Berlin Youth Football was always going to be on an extra week or two. So, right. so it's, 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 it's more than like saying with Berlin Youth Soccer had a lot of rainouts, they went an extra week this year. It's more so we're not going to say yes to any other. We had the adult soccer group that was supposed to play on St. John's Hillary all the way up to Thanksgiving. We said no. You know, your last day is that November 1st. Right. <laughs> our youth groups and our high school groups, you know, so still... in the future, Berlin Bears uses the Scott Middle Field with four of the lights. And that's, you know, I don't know if it's a football team, they made it to some state. One of the teams made it to state, they're going to the nationals. They still got to practice, right? I think they're down there. Once their lights were gone, like the second, first, after the first week in November, they did all their practices at schools. The Berlin oh, okay. football. We moved okay. them over to Scalise as soon as we lose the lights. So, Steve. So, so we'll work that out. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's been always the one. Okay. Steve, looking at the calendar for November, right? You think about November and you want to have a little bit of leeway. What is the right day to shut down the lights based on your experience? Historically, it's always been it, the way it seems by going back to, through the press releases. For most years, it's been right around November 1st, November 2nd. There you go. Okay. Okay, so we'll include something on the January. Yep, I'll amend the policy and I'll be accepting the amendment. Okay, thank you, Steve. Anything else on your update? I think that covers everything, right, Jen, that we wanted to talk to them about? Yeah. Um, so, Steve, um, I recently saw something, I don't know if you saw this on the town website, your department reorganized, you're back to being the superintendent, answering to nobody else, is that correct? Is that you? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What, your department reorganized again? No. No? Oh, he's no. been superintendent. He's been superintendent for a while. I don't know if I see that. Hello. He's been superintendent. They've been under public works for about four years now. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I didn't send the citizens. Well, I don't know. All right. It won't take long to read. Congratulations. Congratulations.
I thank God I still have a job. I got scared there first. <laughs> All right, well, you guys all have a happy holiday. Nice seeing you guys, and we'll see each other after the first of the year. Hey, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Uh, dog park and leash ordinance update? I didn't go to the meeting, so I don't know. Oh, so, okay, town council meeting. So I attended the town council meeting, actually. Greg, you were there, yeah. Tony, you were there, right? Um, <coughs> I presented our changes to the amendment that they had proposed uh, to the council as part of the public meeting. At one point, the fellow got up and started talking about, uh, they were talking about the dog park and bicentennial and the meadow and all that, but then he said, you know, but hey, you know, sometimes I'm at Percival or whatever, I live around that area and, um, you know, winter time, I let my dogs run in the fields because no one's playing on it. So then I raised my hand and I this got back up. Done. This is after Donna had spoken. She already. Yeah, I had already spoken. Yeah. So I got back up and the mayor didn't want me to get up and I said, no, I got it. <laughs> so I got up and I said, you know, when we say no dogs on the fields, that's all I hear. Like, please don't bring your dogs on the fields. Sometimes you might be doing it in November. We're planting seed because most of our fields are grass and this is our growing season. And you could be ruling it by running your dog. So all year. And the dog people acknowledged <coughs> that they were very they support. So so um but other than that, I so I know that they're moving ahead because Roche had asked me a question this past week. Um if you remember, there's a section I didn't bring it with me where we said to remove uh uh complex. Right, we crossed out because we said it's fields. It's a pet complex. So, um, and then I think I made the point was okay. Well, I'm not sure what they're talking about because they don't include Sage Park, and that's when we got into the discussion about the softball fields and how the dogs, you know, walkers will go around that. Okay, so we acknowledge that. So uh, he asked me about that. He asked me about the wording again. I went through it with him, and then but he asked me about that and. Their intent in that section was to allow dogs to go into pet complex, not in the fields, not in, you know, side of the fields, fences, but to walk in through pet complex, you know, come down the hill and walk through and you know where the bleachers are and all. And we had discussed that and I thought we're okay with that. Just like you know, we're okay with it, uh, you know, flunk first of all, whatever, we were okay with that. So I said, okay, well, if that's the intent, then you need to add wording for Sage to allow, you know, the dog walkers to walk around. Again, they can't go on the softball fields, but they're going to walk around. So that was fine. And then um, he asked me about the wording for the uh, police field. You know, what do you mean inside the fences? So I explained that. And Jen, I think she said the call told me. Had it, so, yeah. <laughs> So I, so I think he totally understands it. I think the council is going to be voting on it. Yeah, next next meeting, meeting, I talked to Kate Walton yeah. yeah, and I got the agenda. I just forgot to check. But yeah, so there, I know that he was working on it. That's why I asked him those questions. So but I just want to make sure you were clear. That's why I said, take, if you want to keep in the complex, you know, that's fine. Put in Sage Park so that the dog walkers have the right to go around. That was that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they decide about the spice and pendulum. You know, because it, it seemed that the, most of the people that were there, at least there talking about it, were against it, having a off leash meadow or whatever mm -hmm. park, except for one or two, you know. Be interesting to see yeah, I think the leash ordinance will move ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, <laughs> the leash, the leash. Right. Yeah, it yeah, is right. right. You need a right. leash. Right. right. And then I think we'll see. But my sense is from talking with the Roche a little bit that they they may say uh, unleashed dogs are not allowed, but for six months we're not going to go after them in in that one area. Mm -hmm. Whether that one area is that meadow they were talking about or up top, they're going to change it to another area, but. Uh, just for six months and put a hard date. 
I think that's probably what they're going to do. Yeah. On that neighbor who lives on uh, White Sapphire, he was was a big one that you know you get the six month exception, then you'll come back and ask for another six months and or because they won't find another place and then you get another six months and you know it was grown you three years and you know because yeah, I think the council's gonna be on the point if they don't yeah, cause, cause the, would, the mayor said that he was really we got to deal with this way said so it's gonna be in his lab. Yeah. yeah we'll see um when Cheryl uh, talked about this, you know, dog stuff, I, I used the opportunity also to uh, remind him of our memo of July and our comments about losing Mistle Creek and, you know, that we felt that it should be fenced in if you're going to use an area down there, but you have to talk with the high school, the middle school, also we have the day camp, the kids have been using it. I said, you're going to restrict it, you know, a lot of people that use that area. Maybe there's another area that you could use up on the hill, you know, towards Middletown, like that area, you know, go up the hill and down a little bit. But I said, you know, we do believe it should be fenced in. But I said, make sure before you close anything for Pistol Creek. <coughs> if you have any questions, you can ask our permission. So that'll be in six months. <laughs> Okay, Starboard Field update. All right, last two are very quick. Um, Stephen and I were supposed to have lunch with our friend architect yesterday, but both of us had a cold. We decided to postpone it so as not to sit in the restaurant very close to each other with masks on with both of us being sick. So we're having that lunch next week. So we will have a better report in January for that. And the State of Connecticut grant update, they actually reached out to Kevin with some follow-up questions. So that means they are looking at it and they are making progress on it. We got those answers back to Kevin that he requested. And uh, he has sent them on to the state, so he's very hopeful. That's it. Okay. Um, anything else you should have uh, to address? <coughs> that I'm All good? Uh, I know Jen put out an email today. For those that have an RSVP, please do so. Yeah, but all of you guys are all in, so you're good. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so we just got an email from uh, Kate Wall. Um, yeah. um, what, what is that? Affordable housing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she's so, trying to do outreach. I don't, I don't know much about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know it's yeah. a report that has to be sent from each town to the state every year with a plan of how you're going to have affordable housing in town, how it works or whatever. Like I said, I'm not, I, I don't really know much. I'm trying to understand it. It's getting hard. Um, but to put together this plan, it's very complex. So they've established a committee to help with that. Plus, um, you know, we work with Attorney D'Onofrio, someone else in his office named Jennifer is very involved doing this with other towns. So she's working on with that committee as well, very closely. So they're doing an informational session and I actually, Kate emailed us saying, hey, this was sent to all commissions or whatever, let us, you know, I'm just letting all the people know it's just an informational meeting. People that are on commissions are tend to like to have an idea of what's going on in town. So, you know, especially the Committee on Aging. I know they're gonna be interested in going to this because they've always been fighting for more affordable housing for the senior. So it was just something she decided to send to all commissions because some commissions might have an interest in it. Okay. Right. Thanks. Yeah, I think every time goes through plans every 10 years. Every 20 years. Every 20 years. Every 20 years. Oh, when's the meeting? The meeting is next Wednesday. Uh, December 15th, 7th, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll be on YouTube the next day. They're all going to be recorded and everything. And there's going to be more informational sessions. I think they have to hand in the report for the community. So it'll be wrapped up by then. Yeah, and it, it's Zoom as well. Anything else? Any questions, comments? No. Okay, great. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thanks. Bye.